All right, let's talk about the uh, Ryan Tannehill, the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, who, I don't know, they've kind of slightly been trying to replace for the past couple years now. Obviously, they haven't fully gone out and just gotten rid of him. Uh, you know, they could replace him if they wanted to. I'm sure a team would trade for him or at least be willing to take on the contract, the pretty high contract, about $36 million this year. But then uh, it's basic, this is the last year of his deals uh, with a little bit of carryover money, but not much. This is basically the last year of his deal. Uh, so the question is, where is he at? Do you consider moving off of him or do you not? What do you do in this spot? They obviously drafted Will Levis in the second round they had drafted Malik Willis in the third round the year prior so uh, let's talk about just you know first what is he as a player how do we feel about Tannehill because I think that's kind of what we need to establish before we talk about what you do with him so for this play uh it's really the route you see on the screen that's the one that Tannehill is going to eventually look towards watch how when he takes the snap you're going to see that at a certain point uh it's you can kind of see why Tannehill likes it because the player who was lined up with the receiver he's trying to throw to is trailing behind but he's showing behind because he knows he has help deep and it feels like Tannehill just didn't fully read this Tannehill's going to make this throw regardless easily could have been intercepted really should have been intercepted uh that was a, a drop right there so got away with one and this is kind of who Tannehill is as a player who he's someone who uh is a game manager and in a good and bad way I mean when things are open he tends to hit the guys who are open he tends to make that work pretty well he there's just you know uh not always guys who are open and in fact you know, last year was probably the worst uh, situation he had been in in a Titans uniform because there was no A.J. Brown. Like, I think about this as an actually uh, a, a really good example of kind of what Tannehill had to sort of go through uh, in a Titans uniform and what kind of the issue was with him where what's going to happen is it's going to be man coverage across the board uh, and it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup deep down the field. There's only a single safety deep, so this could potentially get open. Okay, makes sense. Let's look in that direction. So, Ryan Tannehill takes the snap, and he is going to look in that direction, and you see that it's just not really open, and the reality is, the Titans just didn't have a guy who could win like this last year, whereas they had uh, with, you know, uh, with A.J. Brown, and to me, you know, you need guys who can make this stuff happen, or your quarterback just isn't going to look as good. Tannehill puts that throw basically right where you would want it, I, I think. I mean, the, you know, receiver isn't quite able to get there. Tannehill's doing a fine job, but the reality is this is just not what got Tannehill paid in the first place by Tennessee. What got Tannehill paid was they were able to run these play actions with Derrick Henry. They were able to get guys open, and he was able to take advantage of that in a great way. And when things were working, uh, he was able to be part of that working. I mean, he was a legitimate part of it. It wasn't just like he was coasting on guys getting open. He would then thrive in those spots. But, like, you also have plays like this where, uh, you know, I, I do think that we did see flashes of when things worked for the uh, Tennessee Titans, they worked and they were able, to, you know, they were able to make stuff happen. And, you know, uh, when they traded away AJ Brown, they got someone back, right? They didn't just give him away for nothing. They got Traylon Burks, uh, when well, they got a, a draft pick that they spent on Traylon Burks, who they were able to, you know, uh, he, listen, he was not A.J. Brown, right? That was unfair expectations to put on Traylon Burks to expect him to be A.J. Brown. Did he sometimes show flashes of what A.J. Brown could do, though, as a rookie? Yeah, he did. And this is going to be an example of him doing exactly that. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and watch what happens. So Tannehill's going to take the snap right here, and you're going to see that Traylon Burks, at a certain point, I mean, right here, as Tannehill is in the throwing motion, there is a window to make this throw. Now, this isn't a super easy throw to make. This isn't a layup by any means. It's, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, to make use the basketball term, it's kind of like a lightly contested three, right? Not like a heavy contested three, but one where, like, there is a little bit of pressure there, so you can't just, you know, uh, take your time and throw. But at the same time, it's kind of one that if you're a good, uh, uh, you know, three-point shooter, you expect to hit it. And as you see, Tannehill is going to hit it right here. You know, again, really good throw. I guess you could argue it's just a hair behind, but still very good and right where he needs, you know, basically right where he needs it to be. As long as he had those types of windows, he's been successful for his entire Tennessee career. That's never really been the issue with Tannehill. 
and even in stuff like this, where it's going to be zone coverage, and the way it works is pretty simple, where you have three receivers running different routes, uh, and basically one's running further deep, one's running further underneath, and then one's going to be kind of more towards the middle, right? And since there's only two Green Bay players in that area who are covering in that area, there could be another Green Bay player who reads it and gets over there and is able to make a play, but it'll take a little bit of time for that to happen, and hopefully someone gets open, but Tannehill has to locate which one is open and then make the throw quick enough to make sure they can gain as many yards as possible. So first the play develops, right? Tannehill takes a snap, he looks over in that direction, and hey, there is a guy who's open. It's the, the middle one, which tends to be the guy who gets open, right? The guy who's most in the middle, because the guy underneath covers the underneath guy, guy deep covers the deep guy. Uh, so the uh, kind of the middle route is the one that is open here for Tannehill, and he does locate it pretty quickly. Tannehill makes this throw, and they are able to get a touchdown right there, and these are the things that Tannehill does well. This is the value that Tannehill brings to the table. He's very good at these spots, and to be honest, he can be a bit of a playmaker at times as well. That's certainly not what he's known for. That's not what he specializes in, but you will see flashes of him going above and beyond, but the main thing that you like about with Tannehill is he is someone who, you know, when you give him an inch, he takes an inch and occasionally will take two inches. Usually not going to take a mile, but that's just not the quarterback that he is. And the reality is, if you can get a good offense around him, then typically you can do pretty well. But for Tennessee, there were plenty of times where stuff like this would happen last year, where, again, the way this works is you're going to have, uh, it's going to be Robert Woods, actually, who's going to try to get open over the middle. Watch how when this play begins, you see that it's a little bit working, right? I mean, you know, uh, Tremaine Edmonds, who I think is a very good player, uh, just got paid a ton by Chicago. He's hanging with Woods pretty well. Uh, so, you know, who is going, it, it, should Tannehill make this throw, I guess? Should Tannehill be able to fit the ball through this window? It, to me, this is kind of one of those, like, it's a tough play, and you don't expect guys to be able to make tough plays consistently. This is a contested three to continue to use the basketball analogy. And this time for Tannehill, the ball is tipped up and ends up getting intercepted as opposed to getting complete. And for Tannehill, this is kind of how I view him as a player and kind of one of the issues with Ryan Tannehill is that this can work to win you games, certainly in the regular season, right? A Ryan Tannehill type player can win you games because he is a pretty good player, but the issue is that you're probably not going to be in a great offensive situation through three or four postseason games, and we saw it against Cincinnati. When he wasn't in a great situation, he kind of melted down a little bit and was a big reason why they ended up losing that playoff game, and you could argue was the reason why, he, uh, why they lost that playoff game. Now, at the same time, if you can build a good enough offense around him, you could still have a lethal offense, and you could have an offense that is theoretically good enough that they can have Tannehill in good situations consistently in the playoffs, because they don't really need to be great situations, but they need to be good situations for to get the most value out of him. You could do that, but when you're paying him over $30 million a year, it's just a lot more difficult to do that, which is why I think the Will Levis uh, trade, or the Leg Will Levis pick, I should say, they traded up to get him, but the selection itself makes some sense to me because if he can be a right, even if not quite as good of a Ryan Tannehill, well, you can get that and be paying him over $30 million a year less, which could be, you know, totally worth it, even if it ends up being a downgrade. Who knows how well Levis will end up working out, but it's kind of why I, I like the pick. But I also don't think you have to w move on from Tannehill necessarily because he does, he is someone who still helps you win right now. And, you know, Again, sometimes a Matt Stafford situation happens where a player is good in the regular season but then turns it on in the postseason. Maybe Tannehill could have a run like that. Who knows? But yeah, very interesting stuff. But those are my thoughts on Tannehill and how good he is. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.